In this week's episode of Studio Inter, we're joined by the Athletics' James Horncastle to preview the upcoming games against Roma and Juve, reaction to Mourinho, uh, this week's Moji Moratti and Frog, and much, much more. Everything here on Studio Inter, only on sempreinter.com. Benvenuti, bentornati to another edition of Studio Inter. I'm your host, Nima Tale Ruzzari. We're welcoming you to, welcoming all dear Campioni d'Italia to a new week. Uh, a week <laughs> where, <laughs> where Inter have two pointless games against Roma and Juve, although... They're not really that pointless, which we'll get into. Uh, but let's. Be, but before we get into all of that, let me let me introduce my panelists, starting with the Semperinter.com preview writer, Mr. Mohamed Nasser. How are you doing today, Mo? Yeah, Mystic Mo is doing very well. Thank you very much for asking, and <laughs> looking forward to getting into this episode very much. So yeah, indeed. And we're also joined by uh, the Semperinter.com chief news uh, chief news editor, Mr. William Beckman. I take it you're doing ra- rather well. I am, yes. I just need to apologise to any listeners if the sound quality is a bit uh, dodgy this week because uh, we respected Stephen Zhang's uh, request to make a, a gesture. And we're recording this with uh, sort of paper cups and strings uh, <laughs> instead of our usual recording. <laughs> so uh, uh, hopefully this will all hold up. Austerity. It's Studio Inter, the austerity version. Cuts. Uh, cuts. cuts, exactly. More cuts. cuts. Cuts, cuts, we've and all got to, we've all got to join in apparently. So, my <laughs> exactly. iPhone is so he is Inter. <laughs> yes, and uh, speaking there is our good friend from the Athletic, Mr. James Horncastle. Welcome back. Thank you very much. Pleasure to be here with you. And we're also joined by the Athletic, uh, the US. Uh, is the US Athletic or is it? Uh, what is it, Mike? You got to help me on that. Well, I mean, we're we're still the athletic, you know. I think yeah. I think we're the athletic. They say James is the athletic UK, but we're all one happy family. I I still slack. <laughs> Listen, you can, James will tell you I slack him every two weeks, either in some form of euphoria or total panic about this club. So we're a very small company, as you can tell. <laughs> sure, I should actually turn off my slack now because you're yeah just yeah yeah just the, the away message. I don't know why James is away all the time in Slack. Whatever could it be? <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Right, let's get to it, gents. Um, uh, James, um, when I mean, we had you before, uh, I think at the beginning of the season, I think it was our preview edition, I can't remember, but basically it was, it was before anything had happened, and, and quite a lot has happened since. Mm-hmm. Um, you, uh, you, you know, Inter have had the roller coaster of a season, um, basically all down before Christmas, then, you know, Ericsson being said that he was, quote, not functional by Marotta, then all of a sudden he was functional, and so was Perisic. And Inter became this machine that couldn't concede goals and just scored for fun and won the Scudetto by what looks to be at least 10, 12 points, which is, which is crazy. Um, I'm, I want to, I'm, I'm keen to hear what, what your take is all of this, because I know I was very on, I was very open that I did not think Inter were going to win the Scudetto, especially in December after that historic failure in the Champions League. But you, you, you still believed, you thought Inter were going to win. <laughs> Honestly, now, did you think Inter were going to win in this dominant fashion? Uh, yes, I did. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Come on! <laughs> no, I, I did. I think I came on at the beginning of the season, and I said as much. It, it's because I drink the Conte uh I always have done. Uh, and this is how he wins. He doesn't win by one or two points. He wins by 12, 15. He goes on these long winning runs. Um, and, you know, it was going to happen sooner or later uh, for him at Inter. Um, you know, I mean, even last year, I think Inter had a very good season. Um, yeah, even going back to how they started. I mean, remember the meme of Candreva after he scored that goal in that open <laughs> game <laughs> against Lecce? Like Lecce, yeah. <laughs> I mean, uh, you know, they won every game apart from the, the first Derby d'Italia, which, OK, popped uh, Inter's balloon a little bit and I suppose in the Champions League Inter had those games where they played amazing for an hour at the Camp Nou against Barcelona um, they did the same 
uh, against Dortmund, and then they 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 couldn't hold on and win, and, and they ended up losing. And Conte complained, and uh, you just thought that was Conte being Conte. Um, and yeah, clearly, uh, there's a lot of stuff uh, behind the scenes at Inter, which I think goes beyond their status as a unique unique club that has its own, you know, very peculiar uh, dynamics. Um, you know, I, I think particularly this season, uh, given the financial distress the club has been in, um, you know, I think uh, they've done a, a remarkable job of maybe using it to pull together, um, you know, within the dressing room at the training ground um, to focus their minds. Conte always likes to to find something, I suppose, uh, to to help him do that. Usually, it's it's an opponent, um, but I think, to be honest, the situation that everyone's been going through. But I think you know how acute it is at Inter as, as, as maybe you know they've had to throw themselves into their work, um, and uh, you know I think even going back to the beginning of the season. Uh, okay, they were playing fast and loose. Um, they they were playing really attacking football. You know, two out and out wingers as wing backs. We we spoke about Perisic, who'd been bochato, you know, sort of a year ago. It's you know not not being able to play as a striker, not being able to play as a wing back. Um, you had Akimi, who took a, yeah had a really good instant impact, and then around November time, basically needed. Um, sitting out of the team whilst they kind of recalibrated things. He played a number 10. He played two strikers. He played collar off as a centre-back. Jesus, that was crazy. Um, and, and you know, the underlying numbers that Inter had uh, were really good. I know people don't like looking at them, but their, their numbers were really kind of strong right from the beginning of the season. And I kind of pay attention to those. Um, so I was confident that that things would come good. And then from that Sassuolo game, or really the Torino game the weekend before, where they mm. ditched they ditched playing a number 10, they they went back to, you know, sort of, you know, they, as I said, let's leave Hakimi out for a bit, bring in Damian. Uh, for, the end of November, beginning of December, was the first time that Conte was able to play Bastoni, De Vrij and Skriniar all together in back-to-back games in the league. Um, and and from then onwards, uh, they were unstoppable. Um, and I, I think there were there were a series of games really, which um, yeah, I, I, it, it's it's always a, a journalistic trope to go to a manager and basically say on on what did this title hinge or on what did this mm. season hinge. I, I think you know Sassuolo's won, but I mean I think uh, within the group, beating Juventus in mid January was massive for them. Um, because they hadn't done it. They'd lost both of those games the season before. Th- those were the difference, really, in, in, in winning the title and losing it. Um, uh, and then I think that period in, in was it the, the February, in, in between the international break, where they beat Lazio, overtook um, Milan going into the international break, came out of the international break, played Milan and beat them 3-0. It was done. It was finished. Mm. I mean, for, for for me, this this title race has been over since mid mid January, um, just because because they had nothing else to focus on other than uh, other than the league. You know, I mean, going out of the Champions League in the way that they did, and I kind of agree with Conte that they were unlucky, given you know how um, on the balance of play they deserve to go through, undoubtedly um, in, in the group stages. Um, but for Vidal being stupid, giving away silly penalties. I mean, that's another turning point of the season, right? Vidal just gets injured and is is dropped. <laughs> you know? um, and uh, I think that's one of the most incredible things. I say incredible. It's not. It's not incredible when into you know have spent what they've spent and 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 paid some of these guys these kind of wages. But um, you know, Conte. If you look at if you look at the team he's got, you know, aside from Hakimi. You know the guys he signed for experience uh, in the summer off for free. Vidal and Kolarov didn't really contribute anything. Uh, Damian's the only uh, summer summer signing with Hakimi who who came in and kind of uh, changed the team, I suppose, as a as a backup. 
Um, and, and, you know, he repurposed players who look like lost causes. We talked about Perisic, but Ericsson after the January transfer window closed and they basically knew that they weren't going to be able to sell him um, to see him play a new role and sort of get up to speed with with what Conte wanted, um, I think was, you know, again, he's he's proven himself, in my opinion, to be a coach who isn't just like a relentless and very demanding winner, but he's someone who just improves players. Um, and uh, and yeah, I, I think it's 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 been a it's been a procession, <laughs> really. It really has. Certainly. Um, I'm going to hand you over to uh, Mike. Did you have a question for James? I do. Hello, James. Um, obviously, the elephant in the room right now is, okay, the Scudetto's clinched, but nobody knows what the offseason is going to look like, how much of a Mercato there could, see, could conceivably be. Uh, I'm not going to ask you to comment on that right now because I think we're all still trying to find it out. But I guess in the broader <laughs> sense, if – Let's say this is truly a period of austerity and Inter can't do much more than minor tweaks. How much confidence do you have in them being able to win a uh, 20th Scudetto next year and, and to repeat this? Because I'm assuming, you know, it, it, in fairness to Inter, right? I mean, they're not the only club asking people to take, uh, you know, wage deductions. Juventus and Roma are in the in the news for doing the same thing. But clearly some of these issues are unique. So how how bad is it and how much hope should we have that if worse comes to worse and there isn't much overhaul, but there isn't money departures either – that there is enough for another Scudetto next year? Well, I think uh, the summer transfer market is is going to be uh, one of the least active and kind of shallowest in, in a long, long time. I think people were anticipating that already last summer. I think now that we're 18 months into a pandemic and things have really started to crunch, um, uh, we're going to see it uh, again uh, this summer. Um, because everyone wants to sell, but nobody wants to buy. And uh, <laughs> that's a real issue. Um, I, I think in Inter's case, they'll be in a strong uh, position going into next season, just because I think the the team, uh, as it's presently kind of constituted, is 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 very strong. It's 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 developed a mentality. It's been there, done that now. It, it knows what it takes to win things. Um but it, it just depends how how much the team is downsized, I think, um, because I would I would anticipate uh, sales. Um, I, I just I just I, I I can't imagine a situation in which, I mean, you, you hear about this on you know the kind of talk shows on a Saturday and Sunday on Italian TV. The the question is always, well, can Inter strengthen? How are Inter going to strengthen? And you know the, the the best case scenario always seems to be let's hold on to what we've got. Um, I think that's going to be I think that's going to be hard. Um, so you know it, you then have to ask what the consequences of of, of that is really um, because you know Conte uh, already at the end of last season um, you know shortly after the, the signing of Hakimi he, he, he said uh, yeah the project stopped. Um, uh, there and then, um, you know, Conte is always a, uh, as a coach who wants to kick on. You know, I mean, we saw that at Juventus, you know, incredibly end of year three, 102 points. He makes that comment about uh, them not being competitive or not having the kind of resources to compete in the Champions League um, and uh, stays, comes back for preseason, resigns two days later. Um, so, you know, it clearly matters to him um, knowing uh, that there is a, a club behind him and an owner behind him who's who's going to back him and, and, and keep improving the team. Um, but, you know, does he actually look at the, the environment in which we're all living at the moment and say, it doesn't matter where I go, that's not going to be possible? Um, right. So yeah. it's, it, it's, it's, a really, it's a really difficult um, situation. I think we'll see... We'll see more swaps again um, uh, this summer, um, but you know I, I do think Inter will. Uh, I do think some of the players that um, you guys have probably got quite attached to <laughs> over the over the course of the last uh, year or so, you know maybe one or two will will have to find a Premier League team. You reckon? You really think so? You really uh, think so? 
Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Because, I mean, the room, the, the thing that, I mean, what I believe the most that is coming out is that they need to cut costs by 20%, 15 to 20%. That's wage costs, and that's mainly the first team. Um, and other than that, they, from what we've understood, is they've secured some sort of financing and loan and cash injection to buy out and liquidate Lion Rock for 33 million euros. And the rest is going to be used to stabilize the club over the next you know, whenever things open up again to basically cover everything. I mean, that, that's that's what they that's what we're hearing from reliable sources. But if but but what you're suggesting is they need to cut even further and actually sell star players to to fund and and that with an Antonio Conte with an expiring contract. I mean, <laughs> it's not going to sit well. <laughs> no, it's not going to sit well. It's it's not going to work. He's not going to accept that. There's, there's just no way he's going to accept that. He's going to fight. I mean, if you think the shitstorm at Chelsea the last year was bad, well, that that's a that's a, that's a breeze in the wind compared to what's what's in store for for Steven Zhang if he thinks he's going to do enjoy, that. You've got to enjoy this period, as as Antonio keeps saying. You've got to, you got to <laughs> stand back, smell the roses, enjoy it while you can. That's that's. <laughs> That's his message at the moment. So yeah, that's just, do no. It. I mean, I, I mean, basically, I mean, we'll have to wait and see. But I mean, I, I, I think it's politically untenable for the Zhangs for for Suning to stay at Inter if they're going to do that. That I can say. Well, that. I mean, that's what that's what I'm I'm interested in. You know, um, you guys as Interisti, what what you what you think of the owners? Because um, on the one hand, they have delivered uh, the league title that. Um, well, yeah, the popular Inter has been waiting for for uh, for such a long time, but at what cost? Um, well, I mean, they've invested 700 million euros as well. I mean, we understand that it's a it's a you know pandemic and all that. I I still think that sure. I mean, I I I can't imagine that he would do that. They would do that. That they would start you know cashing in on. I don't know if they sell Stefan de Frey, Fine. That that makes sense. It's the one. It's the one player that they reasonably could sell and get yeah. a huge return on, and they could they could weather it to yeah. a point. Exactly. It's the only name. Every time I think about who it could be, that's the only. But if name Lukaku leaves, sense. then that's over. Conte will not stand for that. <laughs> uh, there's no way. Con- there there are players that he simply will not accept, and and they're, they're you know especially when that's now that it's clicking and working. I I I my I mean I think of someone like Alexis Sanchez, but then again. Who's going to pay pay him that? What he wants? Who's no, gonna... I mean the, the 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 problem the problem is is that the high earners the 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 Vidal's uh, the Ericsons the Alexis's um, yeah in a, in an ideal world you you would I think persuade them to either take a wage cut um, or uh, you know find find a new club for them. Um, yeah, the thing is, yeah, Alexis has had a had a very good season as kind of the the pinch hitter from the bench. You know, I mean, he's contributed mm-hmm. a lot. We saw it at the weekend. Yeah. Um, you know, Ericsson has has become uh, you know part of the the first team on a regular basis. Uh, he's really turned that around. But I think Ericsson is a really interesting case because everybody everybody knew he was on the market from mid November onwards. Um, so they had you know two and a half months to find a buyer. And they couldn't. Uh, um, and, See, this is why uh, this is why I think nothing will happen this summer. Because if there's one thing I think we've known, I mean, sure, if there is a buyer, then I think Sooning will sell. But, but, but I, it, yeah. I, I think it, 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 it the, the reason why I highlight those players is because they're of a certain age um, mm-hmm. where they're unmovable in some respects. Yeah, you know, Juventus have this problem, I suppose, if you want to call it a problem mm-hmm. with players like Aaron Ramsey. You know, in that, you know, their late twenties, early thirties, they're on, uh, they're looking, for, they're on, they're on huge money, and uh, and finding someone who can a is prepared to pay a fee for them. Remember, Inter got Alexis for nothing because United cut their losses on on him. Um, so yeah, get get someone to pay a fee for him or or swap him, um, uh, and then match him uh, match the wages that he's getting and well that's that's, that, that's exactly that's it incredible. so the the, the 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 player the only players really i think that that inter can can find the market for are the guys who are between 21 and 26 mm. and and i and i think that that will you know if if 
I, I don't see I don't think Suning are that stupid because that means that means selling someone like Lautaro or Bastoni or Barella. And if you want riots outside of your office, that's exactly what you do, because that's exactly going to be it. This fan base will not stand for that. It's it's very simple. It's it's not it's not even an opinion or me saying me expressing my personal opinion. That's my read on the on the temperature on the on the you know on the on, on the pulse of this fan base. They will burn that that city to the ground <laughs> if, if if Suning think that they can cash in on Barella, Bastoni, or Lautaro. It's just not gonna it's not gonna fly because they want to they want to open, especially now with Juventus missing the Champions League, especially with everything going on. The cost cutting and austerity mercato, fine. That that applies to everyone, and also they'll probably put a lot of pressure on the players to accept the, you know, as we're hearing from from Sky and Di Marzio, who clearly gets his his information from certain directors um, directly. Uh, the the message is give up two two months' wages. We'll negotiate pr- in private, but that's the that's the that's the message coming out, and that is something that I think the fans will put pressure on them to do. Uh, and already Di Canio and the and the such have already started doing that because let's remember Inter are the only club that have not they've not adapted to this new reality at all. Everyone else has has either furloughed, has 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 either you know postponed uh, or you know lowered wages or said that we'll pay your pay you know the bulk of uh, of your wages later in your contract. Inter have done nothing. All they've done is postponed payments and all of those payments are made and Marotta confirmed on Sunday that even the Scudetto bonuses will be paid. So they've decided to go that way and now they have to deal with this new reality. And the new reality is the the as Marotta has said repeatedly, it's not sustainable. The pre pandemic wages post pandemic is simply not sustain sustainable. And I think that's that's common sense. I mean, now I'm reading Real Madrid, man I mean everyone is cutting wages. Um I, I think I that, mean, this, you know, this this is why the Super League uh, was long mm. exactly like exactly. like the 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 narrative which has has largely been um, uh, dominated really by um, sort of English language media mm. is that um, this this is about greed it's about <laughs> it's about power grab and, and there, there, there is there is an element of that I mean <laughs> certainly the, the the big six in the Premier League yeah they're making losses and they're uh, and their businesses are suffering in football, but the Premier League is a super league by another name. Exactly. Um, and um, and and the, and the clubs the clubs in Southern Europe, um, uh, yeah, don't have uh, Premier League TV money to fall back on. No. Um, even when when crowds are at games, they don't have um, privately owned stadia, which uh, which deliver revenues of 100 million euro a year. Mm. And yet they're they're all operating in the same market and competing for the same exactly Champions League, Europa League uh, trophy. Um, and so, uh, you know, I, I, I think I, I think the Super League, the way it, the way it came about, it would never have it would have never have happened. Um, but they could have done a much better job, I think. <laughs> explaining themselves i mean yes. that's, you mean you mean it. midnight emails to fabio caressa and yourself uh launching something at sunday night is is not a good way to launch something like some sort of bond villain i don't no. know what you mean no. <laughs> whatever do you mean <laughs> so uh but you know ultimately it is about and, and the, the system is unsustainable i mean it's it's utterly absurd um that you know nima if you have a job and you get sacked um, yeah, you know, the next day you ain't getting a paycheck, no. um, and yet in football you sack a manager and you have to pay him for the for the the remaining what one two years of his contract. Yeah. Um, Not to mention the man the a- agent fees that just these are this is money that leaves the game. Um, that just drains the game. I mean, the agent fees, that's not game, that's not money. I mean, when you pay transfer fee to a football club, that's kind of to some degree reinvested into the game. The agent fees they just that just leaves the game um and and it's hard yeah, I mean, to, to, to stick up for for agents a, a little bit it, it's it also it also in some respects shows the the inefficiencies or the the lack of organization at various football clubs <laughs> yeah well of course of course they, they, they don't they don't have the structure to to find and recruit players or they they don't have sporting directors and they end up leaning on on agents to do that for them but no you're right i mean and this has less led to an escalation in costs Mm. 
you know, I think, uh, yeah, satellite TV, the Champions League, you know, all of these things, you yeah, the Premier League's, um, yeah, making double what the other leagues do in TV, TV, mm. TV revenue, mm. City and Paris Saint-Germain being involved in the game, you know, everything's inflated. Uh, yeah, exactly. And, uh, and yeah, so... Anyway, but football that's... has been saved, James. Remember that football's been saved by by Alexander Cheferin and and Karlheinz Rummenigge and uh, Al Khelaifi and and <laughs> and the rest of them. It's really important to remember that. Um, <laughs> I'm going to pass you on to Will now, and then Mo. Will, did yeah. you have a question for James? Yes. Um, yeah, that was all very interesting, by the way. Um, so, so thank you for having that discussion. I was enjoying that, but um. I was going to ask about something slightly different now, uh, which takes us back to football. Um, Damn. And um, Jose Mourinho is back in Serie A. Yes. I don't know if anyone noticed yes. this um, <laughs> yes. last week. Uh, sort of Never of heard of him. Uh, don't know who that is. Yeah. But the Freakins <laughs> have said nothing for a year, and suddenly their first thing is, oh, we've signed Jose Mourinho. It's not bad as a as a first sort of public statement but what did you think of what do you think of Mourinho coming back to Serie A in general um, and also from an inter perspective you know um, as a fan would you be would you be disappointed or do you think that this is actually maybe a good thing given that he could have gone to someone else um, and do you think Serie A is maybe suited to him because the narrative now is that he is bolito um, <laughs> fed up and, and washed up but um Maybe, maybe, maybe Italy will be the right place for him. So, uh, what was your initial reaction, and what would you be thinking right now if you were an Interista? Well, I watched. Uh, what was it that was a Champions League night or something? And uh, Esteban Cambiasso was in the studio for for Sky, and he was he was shocked. He was he he was like, I can't I, I can't believe this. You know, I, I I just sort of read an interview with him uh, or something. Uh, after Inter had won the title, maybe he'd, he'd given some quotes to Gazetta, you know, sort sort of along the lines that he would never coach anyone in Italy other than Inter. When you know he'd also spoken to the Times in the same weekend, saying he he wouldn't care who he, you know he would he would happily coach any of his team's rivals, as he's shown in the in the Premier League. Um, it, I mean, it took everybody by surprise, um, uh, and. Uh, yeah, I mean, Roma have always been linked with big names, you know, it's sort of been the past. Um, you know, yeah, you think more recently about Conte, for example, when Conte was available, Totti really wanted to make him the next coach of Roma. Um, but, you know, the ownership at the, at the time looked at it and thought, well, you know, how can we how can we afford to to pay this guy and also finance a kind of transfer spend in a, in a financial fair play framework? Um, it's It's very difficult. And obviously, Inter, I think, had credibility from Marotta being there, and were prepared to prepared to do that. Um, uh, yeah, even yeah, even looking back at the past, like Ancelotti, former player of, of Roma, has always kind of flirted with this idea of coaching the team, but has never actually followed through and gone and done it. Um, so to see Mourinho do it, I mean, okay, uh, I tip my hat to the the Freakins. Uh, you've succeeded where where others have. Uh, either tried and failed or basically thought no this this just can't we can't do this um so i'm now curious to see what resources they have to to spend because um you know going back to last summer i mean they they signed chris smalling so late uh in the end of the transfer window that it didn't look like it was going to go through and that was kind of signing a player who'd been on loan uh, the previous season, um, they signed Kumbula for what thirty million, um, and then in January they've signed Brian Reynolds from the, the states, um, which I'm really now curious about because you know U.S. owner with U.S. player, I imagine they want to see him play. Um, yeah, he's only recently started to play a little bit under Fonseca. I mean, is Jose Mourinho the <laughs> <laughs> he entrust his development to, to Jose Mourinho. I, I think that's that's going to be interesting given Mourinho's record with uh, with young players. So um, I know. I mean, the, 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 the silence around the Freakins. I mean, you know, a lot of people um, say that you know they've taken on a lot of consultancy. Um, yeah, they've made kind of smart hires with with Thiago Pinto. Um, they're using data. Uh, and all this sort of thing. They're a modern forward-thinking 
uh, ownership group, um, and 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 appointing Mourinho just doesn't seem to align with that. I would say. Um, I think it's, if anything, it's suggestive of new owners, new to the game, um, who, uh, you know, Mourinho is a celebrity who's transcended his sport. Um, you don't have to know a lot about football to know who he is, and he is associated with success, undoubtedly. Um, but is he cap- still capable of delivering that? Um, you know, I mean, uh, when I read this statement about uh, them saying that they believe he's the right guy to lead a long term, their long term vision, uh, long term project at the club. Mm-hmm. I, I was, again, I was like, you know, it, it, it doesn't take more than a Wikipedia glance to know that, you know, he's he's never been at a club even in his heyday for more than three seasons. Um, so. So. <laughs> Yeah, I'm. I'm curious. After six weeks, I'll probably be a complete Mourinho in Easter, um, and 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 be fully behind it. But I just, I think that it, it's it's going to take a lot to see him reverse the trend. Now, I mean, you know, maybe winning a Coppa Italia for the first time since 2008. That that yeah, winning a trophy would constitute success. You know, that's something that was always held against Palotta, um, that he he didn't deliver on that. Um, but I think, you know, if we bring this back to Inter, I mean, Conte is very self-aware when he says, you know, when you appoint Antonio Conte, uh, I bring expectation with me. Uh, and the expectation is that all of a sudden the team is a title contender and it will be judged on whether it wins titles or not. And I still think that's the case of Jose Mourinho. We still judge Jose Mourinho by uh, the leagues he's won, the Champions Leagues he's won. We don't judge him on, uh, you know, getting getting a club into the Champions League places, uh, or or winning a, a domestic cup. Um, so, so in that respect, like uh, I don't know how you know how we get to the end of year one and say um, I don't know third or fourth is a success just because it's it's better than what Paulo Fonseca did. Um, you know, and and then and then what happens in his second season? Um, you know, does does he revert to what we saw at Inter in, uh, in his second spell at Chelsea in that second season where uh, he wins he wins something, or um, do we see a kind of acceleration of what's happened more recently at Spurs where things fall apart and all of a sudden uh, the owners are like, well, what do we do now? We've invested in the team, um, yeah. <laughs> It, 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 I'm very conflicted about it, <laughs> um, but at the same time, you know, I, I, I'm, uh, you know, I'm very curious about it. I like, you know, things. I like Jose as, as a person. I, I like, I, I think he's really charismatic. He's very funny. I can imagine him being a complete laugh out on a night out. I think he'd be like one of the, like one of the kind of greatest kind of people to just hang out with. Um, um, but. Uh, I, I'm wondering what expectations expectations to judge him by, uh, really. I suppose at Roma. Mm. Uh, Mo, uh, did so you're saying that it's going to be? Um, you said you're saying it's going to be a season of zero titoli for Mourinho at, uh, at Roma. <laughs> <laughs> that's what we're saying. Well, the, I mean, I think that's pretty much a given, isn't it? I mean, uh, I mean, look at. I mean, I think Roma has a talented squad, but I think it's a little bit also damage control given the mess that Fonseca leaves behind him. Have you ever looked at Roman's yeah. squad and thought I could do with a Nemanja Matic in midfield oh. just sort of things. God. Uh, oh my God. <laughs> but, uh, I mean you know I mean this is the thing like Roma lost 204 million euro in the last financial year that's not the freaking's fault that's you know inheritance and that's the pandemic um, yeah we, we've had another season with no crowds they're not in the Champions League. They're not going to be in the Champions League next year. Um, so the loss isn't going to be much better. Um, and this is before Jose Mourinho has even arrived. And even with financial fair play being relaxed, you know, I, I wonder what what can they do um, when Steven Inzonzi will come back? I mean, maybe Inzonzi will be the Matic. <laughs> um, and, uh, and, uh, and Pastore is still there. 
Um, yeah, they need to sort that situation out. Yeah, for sure. and, and and there are several players who are still there. You know, like Fatsio, Juan Jesus. Yeah, uh, but I think his contract expires Jesus now in the summer, doesn't it? Well, you, I mean, he's been there long enough. Uh, yeah, him um, and Santon, I think they've. Yeah, and 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 the thing is, like, you know, I remember going to De Rossi's final game. When was that? Two years ago, uh, against Parma, and Jekyll came off, and the fans booed him because. He was in talks with Inter, and it looked like that was going to happen. He was going to become one of Conte's strikers, and it didn't happen. Um, and remember, that was kind of there was that famous swap between Luca Pellegrini and Spinazzola um, that Juventus and Roma did, which kind of meant Roma got the money, so they didn't need to sell Jekyll. But then they they re-signed Jekyll. And I love it. You know, I, th- I think it. Uh, you know, I've sp- I, I, I've interviewed him. I think he's been one of the great strikers in Roma's history. Um, he's 35, and they in, instead of saying they extended his contract on big money. Um, and 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 the running costs of these things. I mean, this is the same thing with Inter. Like <laughs> in the pandemic, these the running costs of these contracts are massive. Mm. Um, and so he's he's. He's he's going to Mourinho is going to walk into a squad which is difficult to restructure um, and difficult to let's say find the uh, find finance from within uh, and by that I mean by selling players uh, to buy um, rather than looking to the freakins. Um, it's 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 tricky. Um, so uh, yeah, I I expect him to you know go over to. Alberto De Rossi, uh, head of the Primavera, and say, Alberto, you know, who have you got? This is the new me. I'm going to give all these young players, you know, Dad Boy a chance and Reynolds a chance. And, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll have to see. Because, I, 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 you know, if I were Roma, I would be, I would be going for a manager who can, who can develop and make, develop young, young players and build on what you've already got. Um, a Dizerbi or, or, or something like that, um, rather than rather than Jose, who uh, you know, as much as I admire him, I, I just think he's he's not really ever been a builder. He's been a win now guy. Um, so look, we'll see. It'll be it'll be interesting. It'll certainly it'll a lot. There'll be a lot of t- attention on Serie A during his his time there. For sure, you can Mo- have color off back if you want. <laughs> God, can we can we not say the K word in this pod because the atmosphere oh, is just going to reach. I don't know if you've ever been in a mix zone with Kolarov or I've uh, been in like a hotel with, foyer with him. Uh, he's massive, Kolarov. Like he's like he's deceptively tall. Uh, he's one of those. He he reminds you that they're athletes and you're a civilian. Uh, <laughs> um, so yeah, yeah. Um, uh, to be honest, he, he was a great player for Roma. He was great. I love uh, Alex. Just don't play him at centre back. Just don't play him at centre back. Mo, did you have a question for James? Yeah. Uh, so I think uh, we got a lot uh, covered uh, tonight. So I just uh, I'll try and make this uh, quick. Um, w- with regards to Suning and um, and Marotta, we've seen them maneuver uh, what were what was you know reported in the press to be like. Uh, existential crises in the club many, many times. So whether it was the Icardi uh, removal of the captain's armband, shipping him off to PSG, uh, austerity mercato, uh, bringing in Conte. So many times uh, the, the sit-down with Conte at the end of the season, last season post uh, Europa League uh, final, uh, the big powwow that they had uh, to, to clear the air. And Basically, back to the point that uh, Mike was talking about in his uh, in his question. I, I don't know, but I, I feel like we can only judge the future by what we've seen happen in the past. And for me, Marotta and the Zangs, or Suning in general, have been so capable in managing uh, all these transitional difficult moments. Uh, there's no doubt that Inter is probably the best, uh, maybe after uh, Atalanta, and possibly Sassuolo, but the best run, the, the team that has managed to uh, maneuver through the, the the pandemic, given, of course, that the Inter's overhead base is so much more uh, than uh, than any of the two other clubs. Um, so, am I just being uh, the eternal optimist and thinking that 
it's going to be all right and that uh, we should have faith in what the this management team has been able to do previously in, in similar occasions and in continuing to make sure that this summer is 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 built on like they say you know uh, Marotta was Marotta and Zhang have both been you know uh, unabashed in their statements we want that second star we are we're this is just the beginning we're starting a winning cycle you can't it's extremely facetious to be to to be saying this while knowing deep down inside that this project is is you know uh, is coming off the rails. So, uh, where where do you stand on 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 my optimism in in the current management structure for the club and managing to to move forward um, next season well, onwards? Again, from some of the reports that have come out in the last few days, uh, you know, Conte wants uh, the club to be clear with the public. No, he wants he, yeah he's wanted this for a year. Um, he, um, at least that's what's that's what's been said in the papers that um, you know he, for example, didn't want um, uh, to be obliged to win a league, um, and uh, and likewise, you know, I don't think uh, coach, chief executive, owner, um, or president in Stephen's case uh, can kind of come out and basically say, you know what, next year we're not going to compete. You know, uh, they, they they kind of have to play to the gallery, which is, of course, you know, after winning a league title, you believe that you can go and do it again. You want to do it. Um, the second star is is there. It's closer than it was yesterday. Um, so you have to talk that, not talk it up, but acknowledge that it's an objective, which you know I think uh, all of you would 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 see it, see it as. You know, in terms of their management, I think you know they 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 have invested a lot. Nima Nima spoke about the 700 million figure. Yeah, you know, anyone who's been to Milan, who's who's maybe gone and done interviews there, yeah, you know, they've upgraded their offices, they've upgraded the training ground, they've invested in the infrastructure in a great deal. So, uh, from that point of view, um, yeah, you've seen a a, a big improvement. Um, I think it's at Inter. Um, yeah, they have tried new things. You know, we, we, we're seeing it with the with the logo, uh, and you know, again, uh, all these modern football clubs trying to um, see reimagine themselves as lifestyle brands um, and that sort of thing. You know, in terms of in terms of uh, sort of reviewing, I suppose some of the moves. I suppose, I mean, uh, go back. They inherit Mancini. They sack Mancini. Um, they signed João Mario and Gabi Gol. João Mario is still out on loan. <laughs> you know, I mean, that's just that's incredible. Um, yeah, they uh, they they bring in what Frank de Boer disaster. Okay, uh, I think Tohir was yeah to, that was always to, Tohir was always in love with Ajax and Frank de Boer, so I imagine that was one of his kind of recommendations. Um, Pioli had that kind of uh, really good run and then a really bad run, which is probably about to manifest itself at Milan in this in in the third season. We'll have to we'll, we'll have to see. Um, and then Spalletti comes in. Um, Spalletti, I have a lot of respect for. I actually uh, I'm quite galled really by by what's happened to him over the last couple of years. Um, you know, in terms of how he's associated with. Uh, Icardi and particularly Totti, you know, Totti has to release a documentary or a new uh, television series all the time, which focuses on that part, the end of his career, rather than the kind of uh, the other eight <laughs> years, or whatever. That I... show is so bad. Can I say <laughs> that? The acting is so bad. The guy who, I mean, first of all, the only good, the only good person who looks like anyone they're supposed to portray and talks like it is the guy who plays like Spalletti. The rest of them is like. It feels like it's like one of those, you know, have you ever been to a friend, you know, a friend's son or a friend who actually has done, you know, when you were in uni, they have like this end of year presentation of the, the work they've been working on and they're really proud and you have to sat, sit there with a shit eating smile and pretend that it's good and inside you want to die. That's the feeling I got when I watched that Sky show. <laughs> 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 oh, okay. Well, uh, I, 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 seriously. I, mean, I, haven't, I haven't just been able to sit through it. Um, uh, but, uh, and then Spalletti comes along, uh, the, the team does it, the team does improve. Um, I think he did a good job, which, uh, has been kind of acknowledged by, by Conte, but the Akadi thing, 
is 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 just one of the most remarkable stories of the last last five years. <laughs> um, and and Conte comes in and decides. Well, Conte and Morata decide. Right, we need to have a cultural reset at the club. And I think that was that's very difficult. I mean, remember prior to um, everything that happened with Icardi. Yeah, Interisti were fretting over the the clause in Nikadi's contract. No, what was that? 105 million. Oh, it's too yeah. cheap. It's too cheap. Someone's going to come and buy him. That's how crazy the football world is. That you yeah. know, that was. Seen I lived in cheap. utter panic for like two years about right. this. <laughs> right. Okay. <laughs> exactly. And then, um, yeah, everyone knows he's for sale. They have to find the buyer, and uh, yeah, they they got some money for him. You know, it, it, it wasn't what we were expecting. For but him. it was still 55 million euros in a pandemic economy. I thought that was brilliant, brilliant business to be that honest. That was pre-pandemic, pre-pandemic. And that is, it's, that's like, that's, it's, I mean, I think it was initially, what, 60, 70? And it yeah, it was 70. It was a loan with a 70 option. And then after the, and then they negotiated, didn't they? But yeah, I, I, I think, I think that's. Yeah, they talked it down. PSG wouldn't play, pay the full clause, but they ended up paying like 55 ish. And that was post pandemic. So that's pretty yeah, good. Yeah, that was, yeah, that's post pandemic. That was it's in the amazing. Middle. PSG wouldn't pay. PSG wouldn't pay it. Um, you know, PSG, one of the clubs with who, who have, you know, all the clubs around the world don't have, you know, are, are losing money in football terms, but have, have backers that, uh, that are the wealthiest in, in world football, essentially. Nyingalan, um, Goes out on loan, comes back. Uh, six months later, he's back on loan again. Um, you know, I mean, that's again. We're talking about uh, an expensive mistake. He was swapped for Nicolo Zaniolo. Mm, don't uh, remind me. Uh, uh, Perisic, Perisic was sent out on loan. Wins a treble. <laughs> Incredibly, wins a treble, and then comes back and uh, you know has been repurposed as a success. So that's great. But he's still on the books. Yeah, you know, this was a guy who that they wanted that they they were looking to sell. Um, and Dalbert, and so is Dalberto Carlos. Oh my God, Dalbert. <laughs> <laughs> and Dalberto <laughs> Carlos. Yeah. <laughs> so, so I, I think I, I think what I'm trying to say, Mo, is that yeah, they, they've done they they have done a lot of good, but yeah, it hasn't been it hasn't been smooth. It hasn't been perfect. There's there, there's there's a lot of there, a lot of mistakes have been made. I think. Um, uh, and um, you know we, we, we'll have to see um, you know what what happens over the next few weeks. Um, um, you know I, I hope that um, uh, things are resolved in the best possible way because you know it, it's it was great to see um, uh, you know Inter be back. Um, it was yeah it was great to see. Yeah, how much it meant to uh, the fans, you know, seeing Javier Zanetti just bouncing around. I mean, I I really like uh, following Zanetti's uh, Instagram or his his wife's Instagram and seeing their their kids watching Inter games every Sunday and just how much it means to them. I think it's amazing, like uh, uh, to see that. Um, uh, so th- yeah, that that's been great. I, I you know, and I think one of the kind of yeah positives of the last. Pfft, 18 months um, really um, has been seeing Milan and Inter um, be show signs that they are coming back. You know, I think Inter were further along uh, than Milan because they've obviously won a league title. They appointed Conte. Um, they've signed players like Lukaku um, um, and they've won the title. But, you know, I think it's, I, I really want to see, these clubs keep making strides forward. I don't want to see them go backwards. Um, and, you know, we'll, we'll just have to see see what, what happens. But as I say, as Conte says, enjoy it. You know, savor this moment. You know, it's, uh, it's uh, you know, you, you, they don't come around too much. Uh, so, you know, in, 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 that, in that sense, I think, you know, we're just going to have to wait and see if... Um, if Suning and, and the Zangs can can uh, can find what they need uh, in order to to keep supporting Inter, um, so uh, yeah, fingers crossed. Mm. 
Yeah, for sure. Um, there's um, there's a game to be played against. I mean, against your uh, against Roma uh, this Wednesday, and then it's it's the Juve game. And and Conte has been very clear. He's going to rotate. Uh, uh, the uh, he didn't mention Juve. He said he's going to rotate Sampdoria and Roma going into the Sampdoria game. Um, the, <laughs> given what is happening at Juve, you know he's going for it, isn't he? Against Juve, he's going to knock them out. Like the, he's going for the win in that game. Is, is the way I see it, that he's not doing them any favours. In fact, after what happened last time with the goading, the go, his the way they goaded him, he wants to go there and he wants to destroy them. That That's that's my feeling of, of, of him. Destroy is a strong word. I, 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 th- I, I agree that there's a lot of needle in this uh, game. Uh, and I, I think you're exactly right about, you know, what happened in the Coppa Italia um in Turin I think that will be that will be on his mind I, I I don't think he will be in a merciful mood um you know when they go uh and and play that game um and I think you know one of the most just impressive uh things about Conte this season and we saw it against Sam he said this before but he, he's like you know I train everybody you know why I'm a coach yeah everybody on the squad all the 23 players, you know, uh, uh, there's been this line that's been tossed out over and over again in recent weeks about Conte, when he first came to into saying that his best chance of winning the title was to improve every single player. And, uh, I mean, to see them beat Samp 5-1 five, five uh, with, uh, with what, Gagliardini, um, D'Ambrosio, um, Alexis, Pinamonti at the end, um, you know, shows that uh, yeah, they are they are riding on on enthusiasm at the moment. Um, so I think you know, even if they even if they rotate against Juventus, which I don't think they will, I think they'll put their strongest side out. Um, uh, you know, I, I would back them to um, to win just because there's so much enthusiasm, so much belief. They have such a clear way of playing, so choreographed. Um, I think Conte told this anecdote, didn't he, a few days ago about some of his former players had basically called him up and they, they'd they been watching into him like, oh, yeah, we used to do that move. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, I remember that. We used to do that one as well. Um, and, you know, it's just all so well rehearsed. So that feels very different to what we've seen at Juventus in the last few weeks, where he seems to be very improvised and anarchic and ad hoc. Um, so... So yeah, I, I just wonder if Juventus will do what Claudio Ranieri did and give give Conte an into a guard of honor. Um, certainly, I mean, Agnelli was very gracious in congratulating uh, Steven Zhang on on Twitter. But uh, let's see if let's see if that happens on uh, on what is it Saturday at five o'clock or something like that. Let's see. Mm, yeah, no, for sure. Um, I I think the Roma. Uh, I don't want to. I don't want to even talk about interplaying Roma because I just, you know, I, I, I. <laughs> I oh, God. Uh, yeah. Um, Fon- United. Yeah. Hey, this is the great the thing Mourinho about. Effect. It's already this working. Is, this is one of the things I love about Roma is this is the team that can score what five goals against United and six against Liverpool in European semi-finals and not make a final. Um, <laughs> yeah, I know. It's it's brilliant. Well, I mean, this is what happens when you appoint um, Di Francesco and Fonseca, and 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 they they don't seem to believe in in defending or or that 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 it works, and and so you end up losing the way you do. Um, but I I mean the Roma game I I think is going to be one of those classic Inter Roma goal fests. Um, <laughs> I I I don't know who's going to win that. But I think three three. I wouldn't put it out. Put put it past anyone. This ending a four three five four five three something like that, because this is uh, it's going to be this. I think it's going to be the same atmosphere as against Sampdoria. Inter are going to be relaxed. Roma don't want to play in the Conference League, and and who can blame them? I think Jose would would absolutely not. Would be very grateful if he didn't have to travel to Iceland and. Um, for the Faroe Islands and <laughs> Moldova and stuff like that for for the better part of of next fall. Um, so so I think I mean for Roma, it's missing the Conference League is it would be the best thing ever, and and I think it would be good for Roma to miss it, given that Sassolo actually want to make it. 
Um, so, so I think it's just. Yeah, well, it's just I find I find crazy. I don't I don't find crazy, and it'd be a great achievement for Sassuolo to get into Europe for the second time in their history. Kind of incredible when you think of what what's what's happened at Fiorentina in recent years or whatever. Um, but like De Zerbi then leaves, and uh, what I mean, I've got nightmares of them like appointing someone like Christian Bucchi all over again, and they're they're in Europe. <laughs> all of a sudden, they're in a relegation battle. I just think that's. Uh, that's a, that's a nightmare. Um, so, so yeah, I don't know. I have no idea how much money the Conference League. Uh, I mean, if the Europa League doesn't pay much, what does the Conference League pay? Um, well, exactly. It's, 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 it'll cost more to travel to. to the, than you to have do. to pay to take part in it. I think. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's, it's, it's the punishment. Yeah. It literally is. It's not fare gavetta. It's, it's something else be, be, uh, beyond that. Um, I do think I do think Mourinho will will benefit from in the way that Garcia benefited from uh, mm. coming after Zeman and Andrea Zoli after yeah. Yeah, they finished what six or seventh lost the Coppa Italia final to Lazio. If they if if, if Roma finish eighth something like that, the, the, it will be very easy uh, in some respects to sell whatever Mourinho does as an improvement and a success. Um, he will no doubt come up with his own way of saying, I put the church back in the center of the village. Yeah. Uh, um, but uh, yeah, anyway, we'll, we'll see. My, the way I see it at Roma and Mourinho, and, and my take on my, my reaction to the whole Mourinho thing was relief. Um, I was really worried he was going to go to Juve or Milan, and that would have hurt. Him going to Roma does not bother me at all because there is a historical precedent here. He's always compared to Helenio Herrera, El Mago. Uh, and what did El Mago do? He went to Roma, he won a Coppa Italia, and then he returned to Inter. With with Mourinho, I don't think he'll ever return to Inter, although I don't entirely ru- rule it out, but I, I, I don't see that happening anytime soon. As, not as long as the Zhangs are there, it's quite clear that there is no feeling between the two. The Moratti family are no longer there. I don't think he would have returned to, to, to what Inter. What about the Inter SPAC? Inter SPAC. It's going <laughs> to be... Oh. 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 Yeah. No, but I mean, it's like... Are you guys it's like, not involved in the Interspac? Have you not put money in? Uh, I, uh, this is... not got my number, unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, no, but it's like, it really is. I mean, Mourinho had a fantastic relationship with the Morattis. Um, and everyone he knew at that club is either no longer there or is in, is, is, is in lower positions or have, you know, doing not as, or aren't in directorial roles, so to speak, in that sense. I mean, let's remember, Auxilio was a junior right-hand man to Branca. Uh, Javier Zanetti is there, but he's the vice president, which is more of a sim- symbolic role too. So for me, this makes sense on so many levels. Um, him going to Roma makes sense. And also because Roma... Inter are no longer the club they were under Moratti. They're much more better structured, although they're, they're, they're still very unorganized in many senses. But they're not the same club they were. They're not the Pazza Inter that they once were in that sense. Roma have taken that cape on entirely. Uh, Roma are full, full on Britney Spears shaving head running away from paparazzi crazy. Buck wild crazy. Uh, well, everything, you know, I mean, everything that's going on with with Roma, they've they've I mean, just from Zaniolo and his wife and his mother and or his ex-girlfriend and the ex-girlfriend and the I mean, they even had their own Icardi, not Wanda Nara drama in, in January with him, uh, which was just incredibly interesting. And now you have the Friedkins and Diletta Leotta. And I mean, all the stuff that Roma does, it is a bit crazy and, and it, it is a very special atmosphere in that city and, and around that club. I think if there's anyone to come in after chaos and to set the house in order, add a chaos, and, and unite all the you know fighting factions, especially in the Italian context, it is Jose Mourinho. He can do that. Now, having said that, I don't think he's going to win a Scudetto. I'd be very surprised if he did. But I do think that he can get the house back in order and get them into the top four, which has to be their short-term goal, surely. No? Yeah, uh, although... I would counter that putting Jose Mourinho in that environment could have the exact opposite effect. Um, you think so? We really think so. Well, I mean, La Stampa Romana, the, the, the Roman press, I mean, is 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 fairly unique. Um, you know, they. I mean, Fonseca has spoken about this. I mean, it is a little bit. You know, Roma is. I'm not going to say a junior Inter, but it's it's mm. it's. There are a lot of similar things that. Yeah. The coaches have to cope with that Roma coaches have to cope with. He did that very well 10, 10 11 years ago at uh, Inter. I do think there's a high concentration of 
a press that is unique to Rome. Uh, I think in in Milan, it is still broadsheet national sports paper. Um, I think in in Rome it is Radio Romana. Um, it is Corriere della Sport, Il Tempo, Il Messaggero. Um, and Mourinho and Zazzaroni facing off. Now that is something I'm looking forward to. So, so I think I think that I mean. It's it's like I suppose it's like putting him back in Madrid. Yeah, but and, more and, volatile. And and, <laughs> and 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 what happened there? Um, and then and and and, and yeah, the, Rome gets very excited. It's it's you know it's it's the stores of the stars, you know, and and you know I I imagine um, that they will project expectation on him. Um, which he'll have to do a hell of a good job of managing. And if one of the ways of managing that is to go to the Freakins and say, right, we need to spend more money or, you know, right, this play is not right or that play is not right, then then, then how's that, that going to work? Um, it, I, 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 you know, I think it could be, um, you know, I, I hope for the, the scenario that you, uh, you have painted, uh, Nima, um, I I, I I just think it's 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 a very it's a very unique environment. Uh, he is this kind of strong man figure, mm. um, but um, I, I I think it's a long time since he's been able to unify um, a, a, an environment around him, uh, a club around him, a city around him. Um, it's been a long time since he's he's oh for sure. I mean, to be honest, the last time he did it really was his first season, I think, at Real Madrid when they won the Spanish Cup and Ronaldo headed that. And I, I remember Sergio Ramos saying, I'd die for, for Jose Mourinho. And then, and then things, you know, and then they kept, you know, they won the, the league and, and, the, and, the, and, the, and the Copa del Rey and he poked Tito Villanueva in the, in the eye and, and everything that happened. And his famous Porque a press conference with, with, about painting Real Madrid as some sort of, you know, underdogs against the establishment Barcelona, which is the, the, absolutely the thing, hilarious. The thing is now, I suppose, is that you know when he when he took over Inter, he took over a winning team. Uh, yeah. I always remember Cambiasso saying, "Yeah, people give a lot of credit to Mourinho. He deserves a lot of credit, but people don't give enough credit to Roberto Mancini and the mentality that he he gave the, the players." Absolutely. Um, and certainly, I remember the first year of Mourinho into the press were like, "What's Moratti signed up for?" You know, I mean, like um, the football's not great. The um, uh, yeah, we've gone out to Manchester United in the in the Champions League, um, and so he took over a winning team. He's not going to take over a winning team at Roma. On the one hand, as I said, if they finish seventh or eighth this year, he can point to progress quite easily. Um, but uh, we're going to project expectation on him. They has to win stuff. That's not going to be easy. Um, and uh, and the, the the league, I don't know whether it's more competitive than it was then because I think there were better teams in Serie A maybe then than there was now. Um, certainly when you look at Milan, the talent that they had. Um, but um, now that Inter and Milan are kind of back and normal again, and Juventus you know, I think we'll be back. Oh, for sure. Um, no doubt in my mind. No Rome, doubt in my mind. Roma and Lazio's place in the kind of natural order of things is, is re- uh, and even, even Napoli. I was just going to um, say, Napoli with Spalletti going there. I mean, I, I think the talent that Napoli have just on paper, I, I said it before the season, I think it's a top four side, a side, and they were my dark horse to win the Scudetto. With Spalletti, that team doesn't really need any reinforcement. It's built for Spalletti. Yeah, can, be, can you is, imagine Spalletti and De Laurentiis? That's going to be incredible. Well, this is what I'm. But, is but, you, but this is what I mean. Look, you can't be Ancelotti. It's quite clear that you can't be as calm as Ancelotti in Naples. You have to be buck crazy. You have to be either a cranky Tuscan smoking cigarettes, or you have to be Walter Mazzari blaming diarrhea and and stuff like blaming the rain and and, and being cranky and crazy and, and and passionate like that. I think Spalletti. It's something about Tuscans. And, uh, and and Naples, a cranky, crazy men from Tuscany and, and Naples or Napoli seems to work. I mean, based on previous experiences. And I think yeah, his I character think, I, think, I think they'll be very good mm. um, next for year. Me, for me, for me, I mean, the way I look at it, Atalanta, Napoli, uh, 
are are Scudetto contenders next season. Yeah, it depends if Gasp is still at Atalanta. It depends if if uh, you know. I mean, I think we've already asked a lot of Atalanta to keep doing what they're doing, um, and you know, it's. It's amazing that you know they can move Papu on. They'll probably move Ilicic on, and it doesn't matter. They keep winning, but you know Gasp is the glue there, um, mm-hmm. and yeah, you know, I think it. Yeah, you know, we'll have to see what we'll have to see. You know, just zooming out and going back to this top four discussion, we'll have to see what what Juventus do. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, with you know whether the president's the same, whether the sport. Yeah the same whether the coach is the same well i think uh, you can say that the coach will not be the same no. <laughs> they're going back to some horse racing they love a bit of uh <laughs> bit of yeah but uh but you know going back to that thing you know it you know it you've got juventus milan inter and then and then i i think it's it's you you if you're just uh, Roma, you're almost fighting for one spot right with with Napoli, Lazio, and Atalanta, it's 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 really hard. I think it's really, it's, really it's going to be really interesting. And then we we have to find a job for Sarri, uh, and Gattuso going to Fiorentina, and and I mean, well, uh, it's it's going to be quite the Serie A next season. And and somehow we got to find a place for Allegri as well, uh, which I mean, I think it's going to be at Juve, but um, that's, that's, that's what not I a foregone the horse racing comment. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 no. I, I know. Yeah. I mean, no, no. We, <laughs> uh, but it's just like he. I, I think it's a. It's not a foregone conclusion. Although I think he will accept the Juve job uh, as a, because I think he'll be given more powers, and I think it, it'll also mean that Paratici and Nedved are given their marching orders uh, if he returns, which I think is, you know, given the results, you know, this is a historic collapse for Juve to win nine titles and then not even make the Champions League. Um, right on that fantastically happy note, um, is there any? Uh, I want to thank you for coming on, James. Um, and and I also wanted to say because you you've been doing. I mean, we got to say. I mean, I, I joke with you that you. I mean, they've got you pumping out content, and it's fantastic, all of it. Um, so what have you got coming out now that we can look forward to? And it doesn't have to be interrelated, just generally. Okay, I'll. Uh... Uh, I won't mention uh, who I'm speaking to at Inter next week. Okay, um, why not? <laughs> By all means, do. <laughs> <laughs> well, touch wood, I'll, uh, I'll be talking to uh, Big Rom, Romelu. So, Ooh, nice one. So, so look out for that. We'll see. Uh, I've done some stuff with Monza, which will be just waiting um, waiting to, to, to run. They're in the playoffs now. Uh, rather than getting promoted, gives us a little bit more time i suppose um and uh we've got a depaul interview coming out uh, nice. as well so um uh that was that was quite fun to do so so yeah no it's um it's busy and then there's the european championships uh coming up so uh yeah I, i'm looking forward to a holiday at some point <laughs> they will have to give you one and it'll be definitely deserved um, at James Horncastle on Twitter, if I'm not mistaken, or is it just Horncastle? No, it's at James Horncastle. Yeah, that's correct. Thank you so much, James. We will definitely have you on uh, uh, next se- before the, you know, as, as part of our preview or in the beginning of next season to to talk up the next the, the next Serie A season. Thank you so much for this season. Pleasure. Uh, congratulations, guys. Um, I'm glad you all got to celebrate a title this year. And uh, and yeah, uh, speak soon. <laughs> Ciao. Thank you, James. Thank you, James. Take care. Ciao, ciao. Thanks. Thanks. Have a good evening. Ciao, ciao. Ciao. Right. Um, we've um, this. Uh, let's. I mean, let's just quickly before we um, uh, to go to Moji, Moji Moratti and Frog of the Week. Let's just basically do a do a do do a uh, like pre. pre um, Prediction of these two games. As I said, I think it's going to be something like 4-3, 4-2, 5-4 against Roma. But I do think Inter will win win that game. Um, as for the game against Juve, look, uh, <laughs> I, I I don't know what I, I I really don't know what what to expect from that. I really don't know what to say, what to think. I think a lot of it depends on Sassuolo. If Juve win against win against Sassuolo, that game will matter. If they don't win that, then then I think. Inter then I think Inter that game won't matter, and I think Inter can easily win that game. I don't know. What about you guys? What do you think, uh, Mike? 
Yeah, I think that's about right. It's God, it is delightful that these are two big names in the schedule, and I I just don't have to worry at all. I'm just kind of sitting here. I'm just like, you know, whatever. I'm all sanguine about this. I'm living the Conte life, just taking in the feeling. Um, I, I think the Roma match will be a shootout. Roma doesn't have anything to play for, you know, even if Inter don't. I, I think the big thing that I saw this last week, the Sabdoria match, was Inter just looked so much more loose, right? They win that match 5-1. They had, they had even though a number of players weren't in that lineup, I don't think it's a coincidence. I think once the pressure was off of them and they knew this was locked up, they just were able to go out there and have fun. And so that tells me that this week, no matter how much of the starting lineup is in there or not, I expect them to get the result. Um, as far as Juve, if they officially are out of the Champions League at that point, I think they're just going to crumble. I, I think, and I absolutely, totally am with you that Conte is go- out for blood. Conte is going oh. to field the best 11. He <laughs> wants to embarrass them. He, he wants is to going humiliate to them. the shit out of that team. You will right. see him foaming at the mouth on the sidelines, yelling and screaming and shouting and like that. That's not like he's not messing about. <laughs> right. And, and you know what's funny about this is that I could completely see some scenario. They're backing Pirlo right now, you know, and they have to because they're still in the, the Champions League hunt. But if they lose that game badly, Pirlo will be out in 48 hours. If Inter lay the smack down and they humiliate Juventus, like they are perfectly capable of, given how badly things are going over in Turin right now, uh, Pirlo's out the door within 48 hours. So I'll, I'll I'll put Inter down for six points. But the nice thing is, I mean, I'll still be pissed if they don't win the Juventus match because it's Juventus. But mm-hmm. the nice thing is I, I can watch these in, in relative peace. It's a beautiful, beautiful thing. <laughs> Amen. William? Yeah, it's very enjoyable. Um, we were we were hoping we'd get the league done before these two games, and we did it with uh, with flying colours. So that's uh, that was uh, very uninter like to have everything wrapped up earlier and then have it all comfortable uh, with a few games left. I think we'll probably beat Roma. I have two nil, which is a little bit less exciting than than your four three. I hope it's another five four like we had all those years ago or something like that because we haven't had one of those uh, barnstormers for a while. We had a lot of two twos with Roma, so um, maybe maybe it'll be that. But I think we'll win. Uh, I don't know about Juventus, as you said. If, if Juventus beats Sassuolo and they're still in touch with uh, with Napoli in fourth, then uh, I think that you know they will be absolutely desperate to get a result, and that that might provoke some kind of reaction out of them. Um, so you know, and also without wanting to get too seedy, you know, Juventus needing a result on the penultimate weekend of the season. You never know what's going to happen in that scenario. Uh, we've been here before, so I, I wouldn't be certain of a win. But I do think we'll play the strongest team. I think it'll probably be a draw if I have to predict it now, um, maybe a one all. Um, but yeah, obviously, if we were to to lay the knockout punch on Juventus and uh, not just end their reign, but kind of end their future as well in, in sort of the space of a month, then that would be very, very enjoyable. So um, I've got four points for these two games. Um, yeah, I I, th- I think I'm worried. I mean, I I'm 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 I can't make a prediction because I think everything is about the Sassuolo game. I think if Juve win that Sassuolo game, then then it's going to be tight. I think Inter can even lose that game, even if Conte comes for blood, because Juve will will be desperate to win. Um, but but if they drop points against Sassuolo, then it's over. Then it's literally over, and Inter can deliver, like Mike said. A smack. I think it'll be a historic smackdown because Conte doesn't care. He's going for it, um, and and he wants to prove a point um, because of the way that they've behaved towards him. And and, <laughs> and a pissed off Conte is is um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Right, um, let's uh, move on to the part of the show where we pay tribute, rip the piss out of and criticize someone or something heavily in the world of football, starting with something comical this week's Frog, which will be presented by Mr. William Beckman. E clamoroso! Autogol di Ranocchia! Yes, uh, this week's Frog takes us back to Roma. Um, so, uh, you know... Jose Mourinho was appointed as Roma's head coach and he was obviously making headlines around the world. And um, this this caused a bit of a problem for um, one of uh, a, a presenter in the UK who was having to report this news. Um, I mean, it's it's you know, it's a, it's maybe acceptable not to know what what um, what she was trying to translate. But the, the video itself and the reaction it has had. 
in Italy has made it, I think, quite frog worthy. So it's, it's Vicky Gomsal. She works for Sky Sports News. And I've been watching her on Sky Sports News for about 15 years. She's a fantastic presenter. I've never seen her sort of lose um, lose her lose her, the, her train of thinking before. But she was reading out this announcement from Mourinho being appointed by Roma. And then she got to the end of it and uh, they had to die at Roma at the end of it. Which is just you know Roman dialect for Fort Roma or whatever, and um, and she just sort of proceeded to try and kind of spell it out like she was trying to sort of teach a child how to how to spell a word and just trying desperately looking for what this meant. And she sort of was looking like uh, it says here, uh, "Deja Roma." I don't know what that means. Uh, Covid. Do you know what that means? She was asking her, her co-presenter, uh, n- n- "What was it again?" Oh, uh, D A J E Roma. Deja. And so that obviously got some traction on social media. But then I would listen to the radio on Wednesday, the day afterwards, and they used this clip as their introduction to their show. And then they had a, a five, 10 minute sort of discussion about about this this incident. So unfortunately, this wasn't a great uh, PR moment for um, for Sky in the UK. So um, I, I think that was, it, it made me laugh and it was slightly embarrassing. So uh, I think that's the that's my frog for this week, even though, you know, I have a bit of sympathy for her as well, but who cares? It was funny. And she did mm. get very badly mocked for it, which may be a bit harsh, but there we go. Yeah, agreed, agreed. Right, let's move on to something much more negative, uh, which I'll be, uh, this week's Modji, which I'll be presenting myself. Oh, there's quite a bit, quite a bit to pick from, um, and I mean, for you know, the 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 the, the reaction by uh, UEFA and certain, you know, uh, to the European Super League after that fell apart, and and this notion of like trying to go to war, and 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 you know, we're going to throw out Juventus and Real Madrid and Barcelona out of their leagues and, and Champions League and all that, and then you also have the hypocrisy in the Serie A or in Italy, where Serie A and Serie B now they want to have the Coppa Italia closed close it off the same way the Super League clubs wanted to lead, to close off their competition to the lower leg, level sides in the Coppa Italia so that only Serie A and Serie B teams can compete for the Coppa Italia to make it a more attractive tournament. Um, but my moji this week is this new... I, I usually don't flip out on leaks of new shirts and, and stuff like that. But if this is true... That Inter's, Inter's new shirt is going to look like some sort of weird, like nine different shades of blue in snake skin pattern. This cannot happen. It is the ugliest thing and an affront to my eyes. And it's a crime against humanity, this that I'm looking at. And if you haven't seen it, it's on footy headlines or football kits or whatever the site is called. It's all over the internet. It is absolutely atrocious. I hope to God this is not what they're going to put because there's no black in it. I get the whole... I'm looking at it now and good God, it looks like a training top. It's a training top, exactly. It's the same as Italy's or or Adidas is doing this summer um, for, 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 for the Euros. And that's another thing as well. I mean, generally, these that's the moji of the week. These horrific designs that they do for that that, that they've done. Um, oh, trying to trying too hard to reinvent the wheel. It's not hard. I understand that you want to put your mark on it, but some things inter are ner azzurri, ner black azzurri blue. There's not a hint of black in this. The, 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 the stripes uh, are, are snake skin pattern. They're darker blue and lighter blue. It looks absolutely atrocious. And whoever did the away kit for Austria in the Euros might want to brush up on his World War II history first. It looks horrible. It gives me the bad vibes. It does not look good. Again, stop trying to reinvent the wheel. It's good to add, you know, your, your modern touch. But sometimes... You know, don't chill. Breathe in. We, we worked too out. damn hard to get that shield back to slap it on something crappy. All right. I Let's mean, make it look beautiful. I, I mean, have you seen Austria's the black? It no, looks, I haven't yet. I mean, <laughs> I I have Austrian friends who are like, we cannot wear that <laughs> with our history. Like it's just what? It, it's, yeah, yeah. It, look it, at that now. That's yeah, ooh, yeah. That's not what you want. That if you're Austrian, you don't want that. If you're trying to 
to leave certain things alone from 1930 to 1940. It's horrible. It is absolutely horrible. And and the, and the snakeskin thing is is I mean the, I saw this guy Rupert Graphic is is on 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 Twitter and, and Instagram. He does some amazing designs based on like snakeskin and stuff like that. If that guy can do it. Then, then, then the guys who are paid full time at night can do a better job than this monstrosity that that I hope is not next year's kit because it's an affront to to Inter fans. Like you said, we we want to have we, we, you want to buy that shirt, and this I wouldn't you wouldn't you wouldn't you wouldn't even get me to wear that if you paid me. So please, please, this the, these these new these these designers for these kits are this week's moji. Right, let's move on to something much more positive. This week's Morati, which we presented by Mr. Mia, Mike Pilucci. He's, he works a lot, he's intelligent, and he surprises uh, people sometimes with his uh, ideas. Not easy to find one person of this uh, quality. I, uh, like everybody who I hope listened to last week's show, I thought you all did a wonderful job uh, talking about this team and what it meant. But one group of guys that I wanted to highlight this week are the players who, over the very dark banter era, the players and the figures in this club who were the bridge between the really bad days and the really great team that we see today. Because it, it doesn't happen overnight, right? And as much as we give credit deservedly for Suning and to Conte and the current squad, there are a number of players who won't be lifting this trophy uh, or figures who won't be lifting this trophy, but they made things better. They built the stage for it. I think they deserve a little bit of a shout out. Um, and there are a bunch of different groups, right? You know, one guy who I thought Mike Gallo did a great job shouting out and is still here is Andrea Ranocchia. Uh, maybe my favorite part of this past weekend was getting to see him wear the armband one more time. You know, we don't know if he's back next year, if he's not. This is a guy who, in some ways, I think Inter failed him as much as he failed Inter. You know, if he came into, if he were Alessandro Bastoni's age coming into this Inter, uh, with the hype that he had playing with, you know, playing at Barty, I think we would be talking about Ranocchia as a totally different guy. He came, unfortunately, he came to Inter at a time when there was no guidance, there was no structure. He never became the player we thought he'd be, but he turned into a loyal servant of the club, a solid enough backup center back. I'm happy he's here. I'm happy celebrating. Um, for the guys who aren't here, Rodrigo Palacio, a transfer who I and probably a lot of other Inter fans were scratching our heads a little bit at when they brought him in. He was 30 years old. The club didn't have a lot of money, but they paid for him. Really good player for several years here. He kept that bridge going among great strikers of the tradition of this club. He's someone who made the, who left the club better than he found it. Deserves some credit for getting this team where it is. Uh, Miranda. Uh, Miranda was someone who played here before there was Screenyard, before there was Bastoni, before there was Stefan DeVry. Miranda was the first decent, and I would say a lot more than just decent center back this team had in five years. And he was the glue on the back line. He was the first center back for several years the first guy sent post treble who you would see him in the back and you would feel pretty confident that he knew what he was doing. Total professional uh, left, you know, by the time he got moved you know, out to uh, the Chinese league, didn't have anything left in the tank. But for those first couple of years here, very good player, brought a lot of needed stability. Um, Luciano Spalletti. I'm going to enjoy seeing him back at the sideline because he's a lot of fun, but he did exactly what he was supposed to do, which was, uh, Get this team back to the Champions League. Get them consistently contending again for you know a Champions League place. Look professional. Have an actual system. Was he good enough to win the league? No, but he did the job that he needed to do and was a massive upgrade from anyone before him. Post really Rafa Benitez. Even Rafa Benitez wasn't great, but uh, post Benitez, Bridge to Conte deserves some love. Uh, Rachel Nigelan, disaster of a transfer, but he did score the Empoli goal uh, to get them into the Champions League in the most Pasa Inter match of the last several years. Let's give him a little credit for that. Uh, Mauro Icardi, not the name that a lot of Inter fans have a lot of love for anymore. Left it in the worst way possible, but you can't tell the story of this team without telling the story of Mauro Icardi putting the team on his back for several years. He stole so many points that this team had no business stealing. He was incredibly prolific. And for when when things were great, they were really great. Um, I hope someday, you know, maybe the hatchet gets buried. Maybe he isn't totally detested because he gave a lot of years of his career to some really bad teams and he elevated the club. And the money that they got from his transfer is going to prove really crucial, making sure that things aren't disastrous from a financial standpoint. So didn't end really well. Still bitter about the way he, you know, he left. It's a sad way to go out. But for several years, he made this place better. 
and he helped to get the club forward. And finally, last but certainly not least, Samir Handanovic, the single best moment uh, on May 23rd when this team sees the trophy, is going to be watching Samir Handanovic raise that cup. And you could sit here and say, yes, he's not what he used to be. Yes, he probably needs to be replaced for next year. Yes, this could get bad if he is, in fact, the number one again next year, which seems like it's becoming a possibility. But this man gave everything he had in the best years of his career to a team that was miserable a whole heck of a lot. This is a top five keeper in the world for several years at his apex for a team that some years wasn't even getting to the Europa League. And if he's out there now, try not to, you know, try not to conflate, diminish Samir Handanovic and your opinion of him with what he's given to this team, because it's not his fault that the team didn't replace him when his body can't do what it once did. But that body and the things he could do and the way he carried the net for years and years and years was the brightest light in some really awful years. And much like I never thought I would see Zanetti raise the Champions League trophy, and I got so excited when I was able to see it happen, I didn't think Samir Hadanovic would be raising a, a league trophy, but he's going to. And no matter what your feelings are about him, at 36 years old in this moment of time, be happy for this guy who was a total servant of this club, who is an incredible player, who never left, who when the Accardi situation blew up the club, he took the armband and led with professionalism. The man deserves every bit of his moment in the sun, and we should all celebrate that. Amen. Reverend Mike. Um, thank you, guys. That's all we had time for this week. I'd like to thank James Horncastle and, and Mo Nassar, who had to run. He had a prior family engagement to run to. Thank you, guys, for coming on. I'd like to thank you, Mr. Mike Pielucci. Where do we find you on Twitter? At Mike Like Sports, where I will still be tweeting. And, you know, I'm, I, I can't even imagine what my brain is going to be like on the 23rd. It's going to be just a beautiful, beautiful moment. Mm. Okay. Beautiful. That was beautiful. Mr. Mr. William Beckman. Thank you. I'd just like to thank Claudio Ranieri as well, because class is permanent, yes. and that guard yep. was magnificent on Saturday. Agreed, agreed. Um, he didn't have to do it, but uh, as he said, this is sport, so thank you to him. And uh, yeah, I underline and uh, subscribe to everything Mike said as well. That was very moving and very beautifully put, so thank you for that. Thank you, Agreed, sir. agreed, agreed, agreed. Right, that's all we have time for this week. Um, my, uh, as I said, I'd like to thank Mo, uh, Will, Mike, and James Horncastle. Um, until next week, I'm your, I'm your host, Nima Tavali Rutsari, wishing you six points. Stay safe, stay healthy, listen to your author- health authorities, and sempre e solo forza Instagram.